This video is supported by Galder's Gazetteer, a 5e expansion for advanced players. Something unique about D&D is that every single DM is a power user of the system. Maybe the very first time someone dons the mantle, they'll run the game exactly according to what's on the page. But I'm gonna go ahead and claim, without evidence, that 100% of DMs eventually try to tinker with the rules in some way. It may be as small as creating a monster with a unique ability, or maybe as far as creating a large expansion to the system. And the goal is always the same. The DM thinks it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be fun and enhance their game in some way. There's always some intention to make combat more tactical, to make travel more realistic, to make chases exciting. To customize the game to their taste, the DM will implement a new rule. It's one of the real beautiful things about the hobby, how you can craft your ideas into an experience. But you have to be open to the possibility of failure, that your ideas won't work out. It's kind of foolish to assume that every idea you have is going to be a winner, or that your skill as a game designer is somehow predicated on your ability to espouse mechanics perfectly in the first try. Rather, like science, it's kind of a process of trial and observation. You can't force an idea to work. You can only recognize whether or not that idea is helping you reach your design goal and realizing your intentions. So in this video, I'm gonna go over three ideas that didn't work out for me. I'm gonna give the in-game situation and rationale for why I wanted to implement this mechanic. And I'm gonna talk about what happened and what went wrong, and then what things I would do differently next time. And with every idea, you have to analyze it in context. It's entirely possible that a mechanic that didn't work out for me will work out for your table due to your specific dynamics. Months before Tomb of Annihilation came out, I was running my own hex crawl through the jungle in a deadly survival campaign. We were tracking things like days traveled, rations, and encumbrance. The rule set itself actually worked out pretty well, and I'll link it in the description, you know, below the like and subscribe buttons. The problem happened when I tried to add something else on top of it. The players were about to embark on an expedition into the Underdark. And because they were low level, I wanted things like light and the amount of treasure they could carry to feel like it really mattered. In addition to just providing light, the intent behind the torchbearers was to give the players a way to carry more loot and maybe provide a little bit of aid in combat. But because tracking additional NPCs kind of sucks, I wanted to make micro NPCs. And this was before Strongholds and Followers came out, so I had to make my own things. The rules for torchbearers were they could get hit twice before dying, or with one hit if it did 20 hit points of damage. They could carry 20 slots worth of loot, and they could give the help action or use a healer's kit in combat. There were a few issues that came up with this. Most notably in combat, instead of giving aid, the players always had them run and hide. They had grown attached to their trio of torchbearers, and they didn't want to see them dead. So a lot of mental effort and time at the table went to just keeping Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego alive. On top of that, because we were running this deadly survival campaign in the Underdark where food was scarce, eventually the players came to see their torchbearers as just another mouth to feed. Some combination of dragging out combat and a poor cost to benefit ratio in terms of resource management led the players to leave their torchbearers behind the next time they surfaced. Had they ran into a huge treasure hoard or I had tweaked the stats of the torchbearers just a bit, things might have turned out differently. But fundamentally, I think the problem is, it's kind of a pain in the butt to keep track of all these extra things in combat. So maybe instead of treating torchbearers like NPCs, we can treat them more like objects. Sure, they can have a personality, but for game-wise, we can just treat them like a bag of holding with a light spell cast on it. Because ultimately, when I asked my players how they felt about tracking additional NPCs, they gave the idea a thumbs down. I love DMing at conventions. It's one of my favorite things to do. But it can be a bit challenging to get a group of strangers to cooperate and take action. In combat, it's easy because there are turns and pretty clear options. Attack this, run there. But out of combat, it's a lot harder, especially with a group that doesn't have any real relationships, like at a convention. So my intention was to create a structure, a way to ensure the story would keep moving forward without those awkward pauses and give everyone a chance to affect the direction of the story. So I made a story initiative. The players were going to rotate taking the lead outside of combat. Now, when I say story initiative, I know people are immediately gonna start thinking I'm talking about taking turns outside of combat. For example, going in order when negotiating or doing a tense scene. But that's not what I'm talking about. It wasn't taking turns within a scene. It was taking turns on who got to act first when a new scene started. Essentially, it was a meta initiative or initiative for the exploration phase. Whenever the DM said, what do you do? The person whose turn it was in the story initiative got to act first. They got to take the lead. For example, you see a dark hallway with a door at the end. What do you do? The player who had story initiative got to say what their character was doing first before the scene continued as normal. Then later on, the DM would set up the next thing. You see a silver fountain in the center of the room and you hear a slight humming. What do you do? 
and then the next player in the story initiative got to say what their character did. While intended to make sure that every player got their spotlight time and everybody had the ability to affect what direction the story would head, it really didn't work out all that smoothly. Sometimes the character whose turn it was wanted to see what another character would do before they acted. Or sometimes it would force a normally more passive player into a role they didn't necessarily want. It was an intrusion on the normal course of play. Normally when the DM says, what do you do? The player who feels strongest about a course of action will go ahead and take the lead, or the group will organically start to debate options. This interrupted that flow for no great benefit. Interesting idea, but it didn't really work out. Now, if I were to do it again, I would do something like I would wait until there was a lull in the action and then point out a specific player, one who I knew whose character has a great ability or one who really hasn't had a turn to shine yet, and then prompt them to act. That way you're still nudging the story forward, but the player you're pointing out doesn't feel like they're breaking the rules or disappointing the DM if they decline. The players had just assassinated Bolin V, the ruthless ruler of Esquits and the one behind the murder of Revan's parents. And after a thrilling fight that probably should have been a TPK, we ended that session on a cliffhanger. But killing a popular and powerful noble on his way to church in the middle of the busiest plaza isn't exactly inconspicuous. So they had to escape. Because I knew the escape was gonna happen at the start of the next session, I suspected that the players would want to get into the game by planning. But that's not what I wanted to happen. I wanted to keep that excitement going. I wanted to make the escape seem thrilling and tense, like it was happening in that very moment and they didn't have time to do anything but book it and figure it out on the way. As a DM, I thought I could keep that feeling of things happening fast by bringing in a real world timer. The players would have five minutes to role play and make ability checks and figure out a way to flee the angry mob in the city. I even downloaded an app that had an hourglass that would show them time running out. The issue is it caused everybody to do everything all at once. They were all vying for the DM's attention and it was really hard to build a coherent narrative. Some players would have really good ideas but they would take a while to explain and other players would just kept shouting out suggestions trying to make progress. It was just a free for all. Some players were getting flustered, I was getting on edge, some players didn't feel like they were having a chance to have their ideas heard. It was just a mess. One idea for an improvement would be to go around the table and give each player 10 seconds to declare their intention and then resolve it quickly before moving on to the next player. This way you still create that feeling of real world time pressure without everything devolving into a chaotic mess. Yeah, that's it. That's the video, folks. This was a different sort of one than I would normally make, but it's what y'all voted for, so I hope you like it. The latest playtest packet and survey for Garl's Gazetteer is in the description. Uh, make sure to fill it out. Your opinions really help us shape the book. And of course, I have to plug my $1 Patreon. For $1, you get everything I do. You get my home game notes, you get the scripts of the videos, you get my design stream VODs, and you also get my live plays. It's just a really easy way to say that you support the channel. So if you have some ideas about mechanics that I presented that you would do differently, if you have your own ideas that didn't work, please share them with me. I respond to almost everything, so let me know in the comments below. Mm -hmm.